Well, hello and welcome to YouTube, Mr. Robinson back here with yet another brand new exciting video, all math-based of course, and as always, it is an honor and a privilege to be serving you here today as it is every day here in my virtual classroom. Okay, step on inside and we are going to cap off our unit circle talk on trig. Um, actually, well, I don't know how many videos I got to make for you guys here, but at least for my students, it's something we're going to talk about. We've only done the three basic trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent. We haven't done any of the reciprocal trig functions, cosecant, secant, or cotangent. That's okay. Um, but within here, we're going to be doing them, uh, building and finding a reference angle with or without a calculator sometimes to find trig ratios of some of those other um, uh, from that angle, I should say. Um, I only have 13 problems, and they honestly won't take too long to my knowledge. I don't know. It just depends on how fast or slow we go. Uh, everything will be based off how I've said things before, so I hope that they do make sense based on what you might have seen from me. So I'm going to jump straight into it, and you are going to need a calculator, scientific, or graphing to do the first five problems, and then the next eight I plan on doing without them, with the exception of if I have to square a value. Um, you'll see what I mean, because we might have to use Pythagorean theorem for those. Okay, uh, using a calculator, find the approximate value of each requested trigonometric function. Now, let's ignore this, this theta part for a moment right here. If I just said, if the sine of theta is 0.515, find cosine of theta. What's basically being asked of you is you're, you got to find out what theta is. You gotta find out what your angle measure is that gives you this ratio if you take the sine of it, and then use that theta on cosine. Um, so effectively, like I'll do that first, then I'll talk about what this part has to do with it. I'm not saying ignore this completely. I'm just saying understand that we gotta figure out what theta is here. Now this will be approximated, and I'm going to use, of course, if you've seen with me before, the exact value that I obtained to do it instead of rounding early because uh, and when we round let's do let's do three decimal places because I don't want to be off in any such way on that so if I go to my graphing calculator right now well actually here uh, let me start with this the sine of theta is 0.515 so to find theta itself we would have to inverse sine both sides to determine you know like I said said theta like this and this is only one this is one way to do the problem we could use Pythagorean theorem here but because we get use of a calculator and those numbers could get kind of strangely large I'll just refrain for now you know we could have uh, I want to recap the idea on how you find an angle to start with this one you'll see what I do in the last eight problems though so my approximation of theta here if we go to the calculator I'm going to do inverse sine oh I have to make sure I'm in degrees by the way um, you could, you could stay in radians, but if I refer to an angle measure then, that measures in radians and not in degrees. So inverse sine of 0.515. Now this is going to give me, so 30.997, look, it's about 31 degrees. I'm going to leave the exact answer in there, but I'm going to write up here that it's about 31 degrees. Okay. So what we're going to do is they're going to ask us to find the cosine of theta. We got to do basically the cosine of 31 degrees, right? So cosine of that theta of 31 um, is what I'm going to do in the calculator here. So let's go back to that calculator. Let's do cosine of that previous value. And again, that is in degrees. And this ratio here is 0.857. And that is the uh, approximated answer, 0 0.857. So I just went ahead and answered that there. Now, like I said, all these other problems will kind of be the same one through five. And there's still one part I still have to talk about. So that's just doing that in general. That was if you are inside of a right triangle. And let me tell you what's really happening there. That right triangle, um, it, it doesn't have to be these values, but here's the effect of it ratio-wise. What happens is if this is your theta, your sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So for all we know, it could have been 0.515 over 1. right? So as I was saying, if you use Pythagorean theorem, you could find out if you know that the adjacent over hypotenuse, 0.8, but this number over one would have been cosine. You could have done the square root of one squared minus that squared, and you would have gotten 0.857 about. Um, but I'm not going to go about it that way. I'm just saying that that's something you could have discovered on your own, blah, blah, blah. Okay, what does this part have to do with it here? They're saying where theta is between zero and pi over two. That is first quadrant. Now, 
I know the theta that I mentioned was in degrees. I get it. Um, you could convert this from zero degrees to 90 degrees. And honestly, these ones won't change uh, from radians. So just be comfortable with that. This is the first quadrant right here. And the reason this is important is because if the sign of something is positive, uh, you have to, you know, it's in a very specific quadrant. There are two quadrants where sine is positive. Sine is positive in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. This ASTC stands for which quadrants your trig ratios are positive in. All of them are positive in the first quadrant. Only sine is positive in the second quadrant. Only tangent is positive in the third quadrant. Only cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. So when they ask you to find the cosine of this theta, this theta is between 0 and 90 degrees. It's somewhere in the first quadrant. And they're talking about that because you want to know what the sine of this one is. Not S-I-N sine. I mean positive or negative. Is this a positive 0.857 or a negative 0.857? Well, because it's in the first quadrant, it should be a positive 0.857. Every trig function is positive in here. If this was in the second quadrant, if instead they said it was from pi over 2 to pi, which we'll get something like that later, I assume, sine will still be positive there. Sine of that theta will be 0.515. It'll still be positive. But if I took cosine of that theta, it would be a negative value. So that's the part of that answer that we're really talking about. You know, that's that's why that exists right there. That's why it's being mentioned. So anyway, that is the answer. It is positive, and that's that bit. Um, let's let's go on to number two and see the same kind of thing here. Now, cosine of theta is 0.918, and we'll find sine of theta. And like I said, I'll. I mean, you can speak about the instruction right now if you want to. You can ignore it, ignore it. The idea behind this is what quadrant is from three pi over two to two pi. This is from 270 degrees to 360 degrees. This is the fourth quadrant right here. This is quadrant four. And quadrant four only will have positive for cosine. If you take the cosine of an angle, you'll only get a positive ratio for cosine. If I do sine or tangent um, of that same angle of rotation, it'll actually be a negative value. So the one thing I know about when I take the sine of my angle is the answer will be negative. So that's the part that's being mentioned there. There's nothing else you really have to do in that in that instance there, but just know that it's going to be negative since we're between there, because only cosine is positive in between. So now it's just about okay, what's the uh, you know what's the angle measure itself, right? And then we we go ahead and solve that. So if you inverse cosine both sides, then theta is the inverse cosine of 0.198. And if you want the, you know, if you want the approximate degree measure, you can. Let's let's go and check out what that is. The inverse cosine of 0.198. Like I said, this is a degree measure here. This would be about 78.6 degrees. Oh, 78.58 degrees. I'm gonna write that 78.58 degrees. But I mean, really, if you think about what we're writing here, I'll show you what you could actually exactly write, even though I already have the exact answer here. Let's go back to uh, this. We have to take the sine of that angle, right? So now we're going to say, okay, so what's sine of theta? Um, okay, it's approximately, well, I'm going to take sine of that. Um, but, you know, what you could write exactly is it's the sine of the inverse cosine of 0.198. If you wanted to do this in one action, it would be that. And here's the thing. Remember, this is going to give you a positive answer. The 78.58 degrees is not the actual angle of rotation. It's your reference angle in that quadrant. And I'll show you what I mean when I go back to a drawing because this one's actually in a non-first quadrant. But let's go to uh, the calculator here and let's do the sine of that angle here. And that ratio is 0 0.980 if I did um, three decimal places, 0 0.980. Now my answer though should be negative all right it should be negative and here's once again the reason our when they're saying cosine of theta is 0.918 there are two quadrants where you can get 0 0.1 0 0.918 in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant and i say that because you would have gotten negative 0 0.1918 excuse me 198 if i said 918 i apologize 0 0.198 in the second and third quadrants if you took cosine of an angle that was out here but cosine of an angle in the first quadrant or cosine of an angle in the fourth quadrant will be positive this one was in the fourth quadrant and the reference angle was 78.58 degrees that would be like this 78.58 well now if I take the sine of this angle it's opposite over hypotenuse the opposite's a negative value there that's why we're getting a negative answer so just kind of keep that in mind that's what they're talking about with the reference angle things they're just asking you to 
make sure that you know what this angle is going to be or not. All right, moving forward, cosine of theta is negative 0.544, where we're between pi over 2 and pi. This is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. This is, whoopsie, no, of course 90 is less than 180, but theta is between 90 and 180. This is in quadrant 2. You can tell that we're getting a negative ratio for cosine, and that makes sense that we'll get it there. Now, these ones, got to be kind of careful with. You'll, you'll see what I'm going to talk about here, and this is a... Uh, you can do this more than one way. You know, it all depends. You just really got to be careful. Um, uh, are we doing... Sorry, I'm looking at the other uh, uh, problems. Oh, how do I want to talk about this one? Okay, let's, let's start with the inverse cosine portion, right? Theta is the inverse cosine of negative 0.544. Okay, to start with that. So let's go to the calculator for that. And we say inverse cosine of negative 0.544. Now here's the thing, your answer is going to be more than 90 degrees. Inverse cosine of a negative is going to give you an obtuse angle measure right here. So this one is 122.956, let me just kind of write that. 122.96 degrees. Now that value is the supposed angle of rotation as inverse cosine goes between zero and 180 degrees, between zero and pi radians. It just so happens this is in the second quadrant, so you're kind of, you're, you're well off on that. Um, but do you know that for certain? I mean, this isn't a reference angle though, right? This is some angle of rotation for this. It's, it's kind of why it's hard to talk about because what I want to do is I want to talk about reference angles. And you know, when you do inverse cosine of this thing here, it's negative because it, in the quadrant it's in, but really it's asking what's the reference angle See, this was 122.96 degrees, and we happen to know it was in there. I think what I would prefer to do for this problem for you guys is, you know, with the knowledge that it's negative, and look, it's, it's important to know that it's negative, but I think this quadrant also tells you that it's negative, if that makes sense. What's more important is figuring out the reference angle, because you want to make sure you don't mess up the sign for tangent. Uh, even though, I'll just tell you right off the bat, because this is a second quadrant angle of rotation, and because this is in the second quadrant here, if I took tangent of this value, I am going to get the exact answer. But what it thinks better off for you as an individual is just get the absolute value, take the inverse cosine of the absolute value of this angle here, so you get the reference angle. Determine the quadrant that it's in, so you can build the reference angle up from here, which by the way, I could do 180 minus this. My answer should be around 57.04. Um, and then take and then take tangent of that knowing whether it should be positive or negative that's really making use of the actual quadrant places and reference angles so let's go back sorry if i'm confusing you on that but here's what i'm going to do let's go back and we're going to take inverse cosine of the positive version of the value this, this is not a required step but this is making sure that you know exactly why this number is giving you what it is and what it would mean if you did it with tangent and all that and i could ask you what the reference angle is and i'd want you to know so the reference angle is that 57.04 value that i was talking about so instead of having the 122.96 i'm going to talk about 57.04 this is the reference angle that's going to be built in the second quadrant right here that's the reference angle right there and we are going to take tangent of that triangle built in the second quadrant tangent is not positive in the second quadrant neither is cosine right? Cosine's negative. The only thing that's positive in the second quadrant is sine. So when I take tangent of something here, my answer needs to be negative as well. It also needs to be negative. So that's just kind of that awareness factor that you want to have. And that's, you know, without the calculator, we'll make sure to be aware of that on that same front. So let's take tangent of that exact angle there. Tangent of theta is about, let's go to the calculator again. Uh, tangent of the previous answer there. So 1.542, but it has to be negative. So negative 1.542. Now, once again, if I did tangent of, uh, I have to, whoopsie, I have to recall some previous answers here. If I did tangent of a previous answer, oh, uh, this one. If I did tangent of this, I am going to get the actual exact negative value here, the negative point 1.542. But see, you wouldn't have known, first of all, this isn't the reference angle. Second of all, if this was between pi and 3 pi over 2 right here, then you would have been in trouble because you should have gotten a positive answer. And if you're not thinking about the quadrant that you're in, or thinking about the reference angle within, or if there's a step where you can't use a calculator, 
you know, you're going to be in trouble on those fronts. So that that's really why I was really focused on that. I think having this as a negative is a good confirmation of the kind of quadrant you're in. That's fine. But I think it might be better for me to be working uh, on another front here. Now, inverse, and here's the other problem. Only inverse cosine. Oh, see, here's the other problem. Only inverse cosine goes between 0 and 180 um, as a function. Inverse sine and inverse tangent go between negative 90 and 90. And I think you're going to run into a lot of trouble if you're not sure what's happening there. Like, take a look at number four. Number four, we have tangent of theta is negative 3.966. So if I said uh, theta is the inverse tangent of negative 3.966, let's see what this gives you in the calculator. And let's see if you can make sense of what the heck it's, it's doing. And here's the thing. You could type whatever you want in the calculator. Just know what kind of sign you want to play with. But the inverse tangent of negative 3.966, well, look at this number you're going to get negative 75.848. You tell me where this is supposed to belong as an angle in your triangles and when you do sine and cosine, when you do sine and cosine of these things, what that actually means to you. Do you know where that is and what it belongs? And you know, yeah, you can look at this quadrant wise and say, okay, we're between 90 and 180, you know, in the second quadrant here, only sine should be positive. I'm good on that. I'm good on you knowing something with that. But you know, with a negative, uh, with a negative angle, what is it really telling you? Do you know? Uh, I'll say that it would be something, this would be a fourth quadrant value, and you'll actually get a negative answer here, and you'll get a positive answer here. I think it's better that we acknowledge that tangent is indeed negative in the second quadrant. But what you probably want to do is refer to not so much the theta. I think it's more about the reference angle, that alpha, you know, kind of thing. We're just saying because we're in the second quadrant, we're saying, I want to know what this is right here. This is kind of what I want to call theta. And I'll be sure to note that the sine is positive and the cosine is negative because sine is positive in the second quadrant, tangent and cosine are not. So I'm going to do inverse tangent of that, and I'll have you know it's just, it's just going to be a positive version of the value here. So if I do, um, if I recall this answer here, you're going to get positive 75.848 instead like that. So inverse tangent is going to give you that, and that's our reference angle. So theta is about 75.85 degrees. Now, of course, I'm going to use the exact answer. I just wrote this down here. Let's do sine and cosine of those two right there. Uh, this video kind, kind of didn't go the way that I anticipated describing it because mine is more of a make sense of what you're doing <laughs> rather than follow a process because the process can screw you up sometimes. All right, sine of that previous value there. It's going to be 0.9696. Now, if I go to three decimal places, that's 0 0.96, 0 0.97, 0 0.970. So sine of that theta is around 0.970. Remember, this is just a ratio. These aren't degrees or anything like that. So 0.970. If I do cosine of this one, oh, I have to go back to that previous answer, though. Hold on a second. Uh, give me a moment. I have to recall the previous answer. I should have stored it. All right, cosine of that value is 0 0.244. So cosine, sorry, they don't have it on the screen. Okay, and those are the two ratios. Now, cosine should be negative because we're in the second quadrant there. So that's that last aspect of it. And that's why when I'm building a reference angle that's going to be between 0 and 90, our answer is not just first quadrant values. You have to make sure you know what sign's which. See, once again, if I did the inverse tangent of, um, let me find it. I probably should just type it over again. Uh, if I did the inverse tangent of the negative one, and then I did sine of this value, Here's the thing. It's thinking this number is in the fourth quadrant because it's 75 below, excuse me, it's 75 below zero degrees right there. So we, you get a negative answer. I mean, do you know what you're supposed to do, you know, given that it's a negative answer, right? I, are you aware of the fact that you're supposed to do something like that? Likewise, if I do cosine of this value, I'm actually going to get a positive answer. That's a flip flop of what I wanted. So I think it's a little better that you work based off of, uh, I guess, the positive bits of the reference angles, right? Uh, okay, so number five, last one with the calculator. After this, I'll go without it. So now we're between pi and three pi over two. This is between 180 and 270. This is the third quadrant here, quadrant three, where only tangent is positive. Sine and cosine are going to be negative values here. Negative, negative. 
Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and see it. It's already positive here. Basically, we're going to take the sine of our theta, which is, I'm just going to type it out this time, the inverse tangent of 4.575. And we're going to take the cosine of that exact value, which is going to be the inverse, inverse tangent of 4.575. And both these answers have to be negative. Might as well write a negative right now because it's not going to help you and tell you that it is. Because remember, tangent's positive in both the first and third quadrant. It kind of acts, it kind of treats it as a first quadrant without our knowledge though. Uh, okay, so inverse, uh, excuse me, sine of the inverse tangent of 4.575. You have to remember, inverse tangent of 4.575 is an angle. We're taking the sine of that angle. Now we're gonna make sure that our answer is negative with this. So negative 0.977. And then inverse cosine, and I never found out what the angle was this time. But if I ever do ask you, excuse me, not inverse cosine. If I ever do ask you what the uh, angle measure is, you're gonna have to know. You know, you're gonna have to just do the inverse tangent portion. 0.214, negative 0.214. Okay, so those are the those are the calculator problems there. These are some ratios. They're not from special angles. It's not like a root three over two or a one half or a root two over two or a zero or a one or anything like that. Our next ones will be, and I'm going to focus more on the actual triangle aspects of those, but that's using the calculator and putting that to good use. Okay. Next eight questions here, and they'll, they'll kind of follow the same ilk. Without a calculator, find the exact values of the two basic trig functions or ratios not given. So we're given the trig ratio sine of theta. We need to find out what the cosine of theta is, and we need to find out what the tangent of theta is, and without a calculator. So here's basically what's going to happen. And that's not to say these are special right triangles. What is to say is these are fractions, or special angles, what is to say these are fractions and we can use those values to find the third value because of their whole number nature. Um, and we'll use Pythagorean theorem for that. So yeah, these aren't 30, 60, 90 triangles, at least we don't assume that they're going to be here. So sine of theta is negative four fifths. Now, why do they give us the information here that the cosine of theta is less than zero? Well, because if you consider the fact that sine is negative four fifths, there are two different quadrants in um, your, your unit circle, you know, rotations, when you take trig where sine is positive and there are two where sine is negative. Sine is positive in the first quadrant, sine is positive in the second quadrant. Sine is negative in the third quadrant, sine is negative in the fourth quadrant. So the question kind of becomes here, as we need to take cosine and tangent of the same angle, some theta, some angle of rotation, what is the angle or what quadrant does this angle take place? Because I'll tell you what, the negative four fifths, because it's opposite over hypotenuse, it could have been negative four fifths right here, with this being your angle of rotation, or it could have been opposite over hypotenuse right there, with this being your angle of rotation. It could have been one or the other. And it matters because if this is our angle right here, then uh, cosine will be negative and tangent will be positive. But if we do this one right here, then cosine will be positive and tangent will be negative. There's a difference between which one will give us which sign. The ratio absolute value will be the same. It's gonna be the same whatever number they are, and I know what they are, but it's gonna be the same whatever they are, but the signs will change. So why do they tell us this? They're telling you to help break down what quadrant this is supposed to be in. If you are narrowed down to sine being a negative value between the third and fourth quadrant, cosine is negative in two quadrants as well. Cosine is negative in the second quadrant and the third quadrant. It's positive in the first and fourth. So which quadrant has both sine and cosine as negative values? The third quadrant. The fourth quadrant has cosine as positive. Remember, cosine less than zero means you get a negative value out. The third quadrant does. This is where we're going to construct our triangle, and I'm going to redraw it right here. And that's what we're doing. That's kind of the first thing I want to do each time, determine the quadrant that we're supposed to be in. We're supposed to be in quadrant three. And in quadrant three, what we know so far is, I, this is technically our whole angle. That's the whole theta, right? It's not just the reference angle. But given the reference angle that we do the trig stuff in the right triangle, blah, blah, blah. We know that this is opposite and hypotenuse. Now, whether you want to put the four as positive or negative is up to you. The fact of the matter is when we take sine of it, it will be negative. Hypotenuse is never negative. The question becomes, what is this? Because I need this 
to be able to find cosine and tangent because both cosine and tangent use the adjacent side. So we need to find that. How are we going to find that? Let's go ahead and call it x. How are we going to find that? Pythagorean theorem. Now the sign for it's going to be negative as well. Just remember when you do that there. So to find that value, I'm going to do x squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. And I'll tell you what, I'm speaking to my integrated math 3 folks. You may have learned last year about what are called Pythagorean triples. I can tell you right now that this value will be 3. This is what's called a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Uh, so x squared plus 16 equals 25. x squared equals 9. Take the square to both sides. x equals 3. So x is 3, and that's what I'm going to place right here. Keep in mind it really should be negative. This can help determine for you what they're going to be. Or you can use the all students take calculus approach and know that only tangent should be positive, whereas cosine and sine are negative. So what is the cosine of theta? The adjacent over hypotenuse is negative 3 fifths right here. Negative 3 fifths. And tangent is negative 4 over negative 3. That is positive 4 thirds. And we're done. We had to do basically three things. And one of them never was determining the actual reference angle there. I don't know what the actual value is. I don't know. Step one is determine the quadrant you're in. Step two is find the other missing length because you got to find the other trig ratio. So they're going to use it somehow. Step three is evaluate those two trig ratios. Okay. Tangent of theta is eight fifteenths. It's number seven. And cosine of theta is less than zero. I see a lot of less than zeros here. Are they all? Okay, those are greater than a couple of times. Okay, so right here, tangent is positive. What two quadrants is tangent positive in? The first and the third. Cosine is negative here. What two quadrants is cosine negative? The second and the third. For which quadrant is tangent positive and cosine negative? The third. Right. So that's, you know, I you don't have to break it down like that each time, but that's just kind of a, a way to help you understand what we're doing there. So let's build this triangle in that third quadrant. We literally just had this last time. Now for these things here, tangent is opposite over adjacent. That's opposite over adjacent. And notice how I put them negative. So we know what we can do for the future parts of this. Negative over negative is positive. That's why tangent is still positive here. Cosine is negative because opposite over, or excuse me, adjacent over hypotenuse, which we got to find. Hypotenuse will be positive and negative or positive is negative. So what is this value? Well, I'll tell you right now it's 17. This is another Pythagorean triple. 8 squared, whether you put 8 or negative or positive, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to make it positive. 8 squared plus 15 squared equals x squared. That's 64 plus 225 equals x squared. x squared is 289. Square root of both sides, x is 17. Uh, not plus or minus 17, distance is always positive, and you might wonder why I made these negative, because these aren't, this isn't negative 15 distance, it's 15 in the negative direction of x. I'm not going to get deep into that, because you're going to start asking why 17 can't be negative, and it has to do with the rotation clockwise, counterclockwise. Anyway, it's 17 there. So, we need to find out, we know tangent, let's find out the sine of this theta, and again, I don't know the actual angle measure, I just want to know what sine and cosine of this angle measure is. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, that's negative 8 seventeenths, and cosine is negative 15 seventeenths, and those are your two answers there. So yeah, you're trying to find that missing side, you want to know what quadrant it is to know what the signs that you are going to use, and then find the other two things. All right, I can already tell another Pythagorean triple because I know what these things are here. Cosine is 24 25ths, a positive number. Sine is negative, so cosine is positive in the first and fourth quadrant. Sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrant. What's the in common quadrant? The fourth quadrant here. So when you construct this thing, adjacent over hypotenuse is 24 25ths. This x, remember it's going to be negative because we're going downward here. We got to find sine and tangent. So we're going to do x squared plus 24. This, this is going to be 7, by the way. 24 squared is 25 squared. That's x squared plus. 576, whoops, plus 576 equals 625. This is like, like I said, this is the only time you might be like using a calculator, right? But you're not using it to find the angle, right? We're not necessarily trying to find that angle. Subtract 576, that's 49. That makes sense because this should be 7. So x is 7 there, not an answer. <laughs> but it is going to be part of some answers here, and it should be negative as we go down. So the sine and tangent are the two ones we want to find here. And again, these are exact values as fractions. 
Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, negative 7 25ths. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, negative 7 24ths. Haven't seen an instance or chance to reduce a fraction, but they're there. Those should be negative because we're in the fourth quadrant. Okay, tangent's negative here and sine is also negative. Um, I thought I was going to say positive. Yeah, a bunch of, bunch of negatives here. Uh, also a special right triangle. I forget if I built these on purpose that way. Uh, okay, so where is tangent negative? Let, let's do this one out loud. Tangent is positive in the first and third, so it's negative in the second and the fourth. Sine is positive in the first and second, it's negative in the third and the fourth. They, they're both negative in the fourth quadrant, so this is another fourth quadrant one like before. Only now, being tangent here, this is opposite over adjacent. And we know this one is the negative because we're going down on y, and this is going right on x, right there. So there's your opposite over adjacent. And let's determine what this missing length is here. It should be 13. 12 squared plus 5 squared equals x squared. 144 plus 25 equals x squared. x squared is 169. Take the square root, you get x equals 13. And a positive 13. Hypotenuse should be positive. All right, let's go ahead and find sine and cosine of theta, given that, because we already have tangent. Sine is opposite, negative 5 over hypotenuse 13, as it should have been negative. Cosine should be positive, 12 over 13. All right, four more to go. Oh, I'm past the half hour mark. Darn it. The calculator stuff in the beginning might have taken a moment to talk about. And by the way, the, the diversity that I provide in these problems, the first five had to do with having exact you know, answers. And we could have done the Pythagorean theorem thing. I just don't really feel like doing, like talking about a conventional, right? The one squared minus 0.515 squared and kind of, I think it would have got a kind of weird there. I like to talk about the reference angle bits. So I'm kind of diversifying this problem set in that way. The other part that's diversified is before I gave you the exact quadrant it's in by the uh, domain that it was between. But here, now we're referring to what sign two trig functions have to determine the quadrant. So these things could have easily been switched when talking about that stuff. It's not like I can't say uh, zero to pi over two, you know, on this one here instead. Right, I absolutely could have and vice versa. Just kind of keep that in mind, diversified that, but all these are gonna stay the same like that. All right, cosine is root three over two. Well, I'll tell you what, this isn't a special right triangle. I should be able to tell you right now exactly what this is without any Pythagorean theorem, I could. This theta is going to be 30 degrees because the root three over two relationship, but I don't know if that's something that they're for. Uh, I don't know. I, you know, we could talk about it that way. But anyway, the important part here, theta as a reference angle is 30 degrees, but is this the first quadrant? Cosine's positive. Sine is positive. Yeah, the only quadrant where two things are positive there is in the first quadrant, quadrant one. That's not an I. That's, well, it's a Roman numeral I, but it's a quadrant one. So this is my root three over two me, is actually a 30 degree reference angle. You might know it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle without even doing Pythagorean theorem. I'll tell you that's a one. I think it's better off doing that and you saying, do Pythagorean theorem for me. No, 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 your special right triangles when you have them. If you want to find out that's one, go do Pythagorean theorem. You should get one. But this 30, 60, 90 triangle, that is one. Uh, the sign, I, I should know, it's not just theta anymore. It's literally 30, even the first quadrant. The sign is one half. And the tangent is 1 over root 3, but that's also rationalized as root 3 over 3. And yeah, you should rationalize a denominator if you get one. So cool, we did get a special right triangle. Doesn't look like we get any others. All right, number 11. Sine is negative, this, and cosine is positive. You get a positive cosine, excuse me, with a negative other trig function right there. You are talking fourth quadrant. All right, so we're in the fourth quadrant here. We go opposite over hypotenuse to get negative 20 over 29. I don't think this is a Pythagorean triple. I'm not aware of it. If so, let's find out this value. x squared plus 20 squared equals 29 squared. And here's the thing. I'm not going to round this value. If it's a square root, it's a square root. I might have to rationalize it. But there's that. x squared plus 400 equals. Okay, I don't know. Excuse me. I don't know 29 squared. Ah. Um, 900 minus... 940, 841? I think it's 841. Oh, this is 
x squared equals 441. I think that's 21 squared. Let me check that. Hold on. Let me let me do two of these things. Maybe it is Pythagorean triple that I'm not even aware of. 29 squared is 841, and the square root of 441, 21. I didn't even know that it was an actual thing. Okay, that's that's new to me. I was not aware. So there is a Pythagorean triple that is 20, 21, and 29. Nice. Cool beans. So that's exact. 21. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah, you guys. All right, we have sines. We need cosine and tangent. Now, cosine should be positive, as we established, and this, this is positive. 21 over 29. And tangent in the fourth quadrant is negative, as we do have a negative 20 over 21. Opposite over adjacent. Okay, two more. Tangent is negative and sine is negative. Well, we've seen that before. Sounds like fourth quadrant to me. Where cosine will be positive. There's no quadrant where all three are negative at the same time. So how are we dealing that out? Opposite over adjacent, negative one over four as we go down and then we go right. Uh, Pythagorean theorem that to find out this length right here. X squared is 17. Oops. So X is the square root of 17. So yeah, let's leave it as the square root of 17. It's not even something that can be simplified as a radical there so we'll just leave it like that so we have tangent in that set let's find sine and cosine negative 1 over root 17 and when rationalized we multiply top and bottom by root 17 so it becomes negative root 17 over 17 <laughs> and then um, cosine is going to be a positive value here we get 4 over root 17 whoops I was about to write the uh, rationalized answer we get 4 over root 17. When we multiply top and bottom by root 17, we get 4 root 17 over 17. That's positive and exact. And we're good. So that's rationalizing that. Last one, number 13. Looks like this already has a radical within it. We have positive sine. We have positive cosine. That is first quadrant. So to treat this rightly, opposite over hypotenuse, I'm going to call this one 3 root 7 over 8. That's good. We've got to find out this value right here, Pythagorean theorem. So when we square 3 root 7, whoops, when we square 3 root 7, you do square the 3, you do square, whoops, you do square the root 7, and then you multiply those. So that is 63. Oh. So x squared is 1, so x is 1. Not drawn to scale, clearly, as this is that length. And we were given sine, so let's find cosine and tangent, which should both be positive. The cosine of theta is 1 over 8, adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent of theta is 3 root 7 over 1, which is just 3 root 7. Okay, folks, that actually ought to do it for this. Whoops. That actually ought to do it for this one here. To get a recap, there are two different kinds of problems. They're the same kind, but we did a calculator version and non-calculator version based on whether your number was more or less approximated. Th those decimals were exacts that we had in the beginning, but because they weren't so ratio-friendly written as decimals, I don't want to write 0.515 over 1. I don't want to square 0.515 and deal with the fallout of what happens on the other end of a square root. We worked more for what the reference angle was, and I got really specific as to reference angle once we started talking about these values being negative and said... You know, the negative helps me establish quadrant, but they already tell me quadrant here, and we're not really keen on what the right triangle is so much what the reference angle is, and then we'll make sure to just identify what our sign was. So we started with that. We used the calculator on that, made sure we were in, uh, well, it didn't have to be degrees, but make sure that we were in a measurable, uh, you know, we made sense of what we were doing in the calculator to trust the values. And then here, it was really much more of drawing it out and not finding out what that actual angle was. I mean, in one instance, it was a special right triangle. So sure, you could say exactly what it was and not even use Pythagorean theorem to find the third if you know the special right triangle. But using Pythagorean theorem in placement of the triangle in the right quadrant to know what the signs of the other ones would be because they don't tell you straight up what the quadrant is based on the domain that your theta's in between. They do tell you, though, the, the signs of two of them, uh, <laughs> that didn't help, uh, negative and negative, for example, for those two to figure out the third. So remember that all students take calculus, the ASTC. 
thing and you'll be good all right guys that'll do it for this one here this is mr robinson thank you so much for watching and i hope that it all made sense i will see you in the next one take care